Welcome back to For the Record. I'm Chad Donahue. We continue our conversation with Russ Rose, who's just coming off an unprecedented fourth consecutive national championship. I like this quote of yours, and this makes all kinds of sense. You say it's easier to be happy and have fun while winning, not losing. That could be a nice motivator. When you're winning like you guys are, that's got to be pretty good. The goal is to win. I tell the players all the time, I don't care who plays, I want to win. But uh, they care who plays, and usually that's where you run into problems with teams is when kids care more about themselves than the outcome for the team. Yeah, and I remember I, I talked to you before we uh, did this. Uh, when Mike Pettin Sr. was at Central Bucks West, their high school football power in Philadelphia back in the uh, 90s, they had won 56 games in a row. And I'd always asked him, you know, how do you stay sharp? And, you know, when you get a winning streak like this, you had this unbelievable streak that I think reached, what, 108, 109 matches in a row. How do you guard against complacency when you get a number that, gets to be like that, or UConn women's basketball just uh, had a number like that to reach 90. What do you do? Well, I mean, it, it comes, it doesn't happen overnight. So it, you know, and it starts gaining momentum and people start talking about it. And, you know, the one year, uh, the first, you know, championship, uh, we'd lost a match earlier in the year. We'd, we'd gotten uh, beaten at Nebraska, and then the next week we lost at Stanford, and then we won the rest of the year and won the national championship. So there was some number that happened in that year, and then the next year we went 30-something and 0, and so then it became larger, and then the third year the same thing happened, and then we, we had that going into the start of this year and, uh, and lost to Stanford, who, who was a great team and played well, and we were pretty disorganized and, and didn't play well, didn't have good leadership anywhere, and, uh, you know, it happens. I don't think you, uh, you know, I don't, I don't recruit kids saying our goal is to put together a group of athletes and string it out there. I think the goal is to, to get kids that want to be good, and I, I know I had some kids that were pretty fired up about the streak. I never talked about it, but I know they were aware of it, and, and they wanted to go out there, and if, if they could put a beat down on somebody, they they wanted to do that and you know sometimes you have kids that want to just play with the opponent and then there's other teams that want to drill the opponent and you know we had a couple of kids that they wanted every time they went out there to paint a masterpiece so mm -hmm. you know they didn't care about the other team they cared about being the best they could be and with that kind of streak and with your success and you know I remember Bob Knight when he was at Indiana talking about this you know uh, and especially when you go on the road uh, you take everybody's best shot night in night out and it's been that way beyond the four seasons uh, I mean, your players have to be aware of that. You're aware of that as a coach. But how difficult is that to take on every game that you play is like game seven of the World Series for your opponent? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. And this year especially, we saw it this year. Every time we lost, and we lost five times, the people crowded the floor and jumped on each other like they'd won the national championship. And for them, that's, that was probably a pretty reasonable uh, reaction to the mm -hmm. event. For us, it was like, hey, if you don't want that to happen again, you need to get better. And, uh, you know, we, we were certainly, uh, we got better as the season went on, and we had a chance to avenge some of the losses that we had earlier in the year. And, you know, it's, uh, but, you know, the goal is to, is to try and teach the players that there's a whole big learning process out there. It's just not about, uh, it's not all about you. The other teams are good, and they play hard, and they deserve to win. And, you know, you need to keep your head high whether you're winning or losing. And, uh, you know, I thought we handled the losses well, and we were fortunate to, to win the last match of the year. Yeah, the one that matters most, the uh, gold medal game, so to speak. Uh, I've got less than three minutes here, but I wanted to ask you, who has had the most influence on you as a coach, kind of a mentoring figure, because you're leaving a legacy in your own right as being, you know, that kind of influence on other people. But how about you? Well, I mean, I think a couple of, of people. I, I mean, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a unique coach, and I know that, so I'm, I'm not following anybody in particular. Uh, but, but my college coach, Jim Coleman, who has passed away, was where I learned a great deal. Jerry Angle was one of my college coaches. Terry Laskevich, former national team coach. Uh, but all I do is read sports books, so I've read, you know, on every, on every sport. So I've got a pretty... A large library, you know. So some some people, I have four or five books. I have a lot of Knights books, uh, too many wooden books. Uh, but you know, I mean, I I kind of do what what I think fits my personality, and I go with that. But uh, and my wife has been a has always been a pretty good judge of 
right decisions and wrong decisions, whether I make them or, you know, she supports me either way. And mm -hmm. uh, she was a volleyball player, so she's got a good feel for the game and has uh, always been very supportive of me as well. Yeah, and keeps you uh, grounded and things like that uh, along well, the yeah. way. Most important, you know, is raised, raised our four sons. So, right. you know, while, while I've been coaching <laughs> other people's kids for 35 years, you know, after I got married, she, she was in charge of our family. What kind of student athlete fits a Penn State profile? when you're recruiting. I know we got into that a little bit more, right. but what are you looking for? I mean, I want, I want kids that are competitive. I want kids that, could, uh, that are accountable for their behavior, that want to have a good time. Uh, and, and I think that uh, recognize that, you know, probably what they have inside of them hasn't really been, hasn't been drawn out yet. I want kids that believe they can achieve great things. So. Uh, I look for kids that believe that things can happen instead of kids that have already told me things have happened. I'm not interested in the past. I'm, I'm thinking about the future more than the past. And finally, I asked you earlier, and uh, we're at about 30 seconds or less here, uh, have you ever had a chance to lead a U.S. Olympic team? Well, I've been asked a couple times if I had an interest in applying for the national team positions. The Olympic team itself is the team that selected the year of the Olympics. but. Uh, I, I've had some opportunities. Uh, I've elected not to pursue that, but I do travel with the team. I'm going to go with the team this, uh, this summer to Montreux for one of the top uh, championships. I've spent a lot of time going with the, our men's right. national team as well. But uh, for me, it's, uh, it's an opportunity to see the best teams in the world, but enjoy what I do here at Penn State. Thank you, Coach Rose.